if you're on DWM, you will probably want to edit the status bar because by default it's very, you know, empty. <laughs> I think it just has the version number up top on the top right. But setting the status or any text on to that portion, this side here, the right side of the of the status bar. Well, it can actually, I think, continue to expand itself probably all the way up to here or somewhere around there. Um, but anyway, to set this bar, there's a, a, a function, a special function to set the main window within uh, the X uh, display, which is uh, basically this back por portion here, right? So let's uh, call it, it's like X set root and then parameter is name and then you know you can set it to whatever you want right so in Linux this is really nice because you know we have the, the command line right so anything that we can do we can throw that in there you can make some really really nice stuff um, but just to make a basic bar like I have is not too difficult the only thing is that um, I'm not really I mean, I, I, I code, but I know object-oriented coding. I don't really script much. I've, I mean, I've written some scripts, but, you know, nothing nothing big. But uh, so my convention might not be, like, you know, the the standard in Bash, but I'm still learning Bash as, as I'm writing this now or recording this. So um, maybe my methodology is kind of off sometimes, you know, but I find that it works, and I really like the way that this bar came out. There are a few hitches that I found, but it's nothing with the actual use of the bar itself. It's just maybe if, um, like, I connect a different sort of device uh, for, like, audio or something like that, uh, some weird things happen in the parsing. So I need to fix the parsing when I um, get that. Uh, data in because I need to be more specific I guess in, in how I'm parsing but I but this method here that I'm going to show kind of just works for you know the regular stuff that you you've got and it works most pretty much 100% of the time like I haven't had it do anything weird or crazy so but anyway uh, so let's start from the beginning because I originally wrote this for a very underpowered machine and um, a lot of people when they write uh, their status script in uh, DWM, they'll just put everything to update, I don't know, every like five seconds or three seconds. And like, yeah, if you have a really big machine, right? Not a big machine, but a, a really powerful machine, that'll that'll be fine, you know? But th the small laptop that I have that I originally wrote this bar for, um, it it was really underpowered, you know? I think it's, it's an AMD CPU before the bulldozer days. So, I mean, it's it's really underpowered and it's only one gigahertz uh, dual core but so this is a script here that I first launch here this is the main script right this is the I guess you could say the timer script which um, I, on top I declare all of these variables for just counting uh, times so um, I want to update things after a certain interval right so how do I do that I said, well, you know what, why not just sort of, quote unquote, like virtually thread, sort of, right? So um, in this while loop, it in infinitely runs, right? But um, I put it to sleep every second. So I think of that as like a tick, right? So uh, every tick, I increment certain counters, right? And over here, uh, we've got for a date, sort of, here for the date and the time. And when th when this counter hits uh, 60, it'll then call this script here that will update the uh, date. Whoops, right over here. And the way that I call it is that I just um, have the directory path and then the script name. And then after that, I just reset the date counter to one to begin a new count. So in the next 60 seconds, it will update again. So once a minute, I update this. And if uh, the the count hasn't reached 60 yet, I just increment it, right? And then I go on to the next one. So then I have one for battery. Uh, I chose to do this every three minutes because I don't really disconnect my PC that much, you know. So 
it doesn't really matter to me. I felt like it's wasted CPU time to just continually check the battery and the battery level. I found that every three minutes for me it was appropriate, but you know, you could change it to how, however much you like, like every three seconds, every two seconds or something like that. Um, but it's the same idea, just link the script name to call it and then uh, uh, reset the count to one. And then um, if it's not otherwise, you know, you just uh, increment the count. If it's not equal to 180, which in this case is uh, three minutes, right? And then for volume, I, I wait a, a whole lot longer for that because, you know, for me, when I update my volume like this or increase it or mute it or whatever, I call the update function within uh, DWM so that um, it'll immediately update me to the latest uh, volume set. Because I think how often will I like, you know, SSH or something into here and like change things like really never. Right. So that's how I handled the volume. Um, same idea as before. And then for the internet, the same thing, except is that I check more often because you're, if you're going to have something change most likely on its own, it's going to be the internet status. Maybe, you know, your router is down or something. So I kind of want to know if uh, something's, you know, uh, if the internet's not on, you know, so, uh, but the same idea as before. And then for brightness, I had the same idea as uh, for the audio, then the weather, uh, for weather, I wait a little bit more. Um, because, you know, I feel like the temperature is not going to change that, um, that often, you know, um, but I still, I mean, it's, it's okay, I guess it, you can, you can make it happen sooner or later, depending on what you like. So, uh, same idea, reset the count. If it's not, uh, 1800, you know, just, uh, increment it. And then for the disc use, um, I'm not sure why I put this to every three minutes because um, I think it could be like every 30 minutes because I don't really change the any any files on my disk that often so maybe I'll change that later but the same idea so anyway and then finally I put the the thread to sleep the the script I tell it sleep so um, it'll only run you know if it has to update something it'll do it'll do that and then it'll take a second break basically just to not hog things you know and and it's actually to create the um the the count itself it's like a tick so you you're telling it to pause itself for a second right so anyway let's close that and here i've got all of my scripts and i pulled i sort of broke everything down into multiple scripts because i felt that this was more i guess structured but if i'm if I were to do this again, I think I would just put it all into one script. You know, it would be kind of crazy, but I would make it neat. Um, I just did this because I'm not really the best scripter ever, you know. So, but anyway, so let me just show one example here of, of how one of these scripts work. Because they all have the same idea, but they get different things. So let me do... Uh, Internet status, yeah. Okay. So in here, um, I use the command line uh, command nmcli to get the the Wi-Fi status, right? And when I first wrote this, I wanted to get the um, the status of the internet as a whole. So I also wanted to check for Ethernet. And um, I was in the process of writing that, but I got kind of lazy because I'm always on Wi-Fi. I can't even remember the last time I've really gone somewhere and jacked into an Ethernet. So I got kind of lazy in doing that, but I should write it eventually, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, so I first get the status string. Then I uh, parse out uh, a space. Uh, the, the trailing and leading spaces um, there must be a cleaner way of doing that but I haven't like I'm not really I have really not a lot of experience in uh, writing scripts with uh, bash so I need to really uh, do my research to get everything you know really formal but anyway um so then I check the uh, status right if it's unavailable um, I set it to this icon here that has a dash um, I commented this out. This was probably for um, 
oh yeah, I remember, I didn't have enough space on the bar, on the status bar, so it was kind of driving me nuts, because I, I, I think that this is the perfect, like, uh, width here. Having it more, it's kind of, it just starts to be too much, but anyway. Uh, otherwise, if it's, uh, uh, sorry, if it's uh, disconnected, then I have this uh, this icon here, the Wi-Fi symbol with uh, a sort of unplugged thing. And then I kind of knew that if it's not one of those two, it would be um, either connecting or connected. So since I already know that, um, I try to divide the status string into two chunks, basically. And um, I set the uh, the string to to be the Wi-Fi connected signal. And if I find that it's connecting and configuring at the moment, I also tack on this icon here, uh, which is like a I don't know what it is. It looks like a piece of chain, but uh, I, I add that, and it looks like um, it's connecting. And then I also had uh, the status on let me see I can't really remember hmm, the router name hmm. okay yeah that that also probably had to do with space cuz the space stuff was driving me nuts cuz my font is kind of big so but anyway uh so then I take that string and I echo it into a uh a, a file so that I can save it because for me I personally thought to myself I don't need to be updating everything right so if something changes, right, I can just sort of pluck that out and then create a um, a new a new string, a new string, uh, without having to sort of update everything, right? So I put it all into chunks, right? And then I call this script here called update all, right? Okay, follow me along here. It's a little bit crazy, but um, it works. So here. I pull in all of that data from these uh, strings here. So they're all here, saved in, in this folder called save data. And um, when it is time to actually format them, I, I sort of sprint them together here. And that's how I create my status bar, right? And I put it all together right here from all the functions running. And then I try to read the previous uh, string. And if it equals the, um, the, the previous string, what I do is that I, um, I just exit. Because why uh, waste CPU time setting the root uh, window when the string is the same? So I, I just I exit out. Otherwise, I set the, the root window to this new uh, string that I've created. And then I also save this string in a uh, file called final string here, just so that I can then the next run, uh, compare it again and see, hey, are these the same? If they're not, uh, update the screen. If they're the same, don't update the screen. Uh, so that's how my scripts kind of work. They're probably not the, um, Maybe not everything is sort of how it would be done traditionally under Bash, but that's the main idea. I have the bar update script here that um, you could think of it as the timer for everything. I forgot to mention also that I uh, initialize everything uh, in the beginning so that when the script first runs, it'll, uh, it will pull everything not not all at once I still gave it time so if you see here like for example the weather was supposed to update after three minutes so what I did is that I just set the count to 175 so that um, after five seconds it'll it'll start uh, updating and the same thing for the um, the disk use but I just I gave them a little sort of padding so that each one was delayed before the other so it wouldn't all start pulling all at once because I think I, I did that once and it at least on my other laptop it started doing some weird stuff um, but anyway so this script is mainly the timing script just to to decide when you want to call an update right and this is the one that really runs in the background and another neat thing about doing it this way is that if let's say you want to 
um, edit the script right while you're actually um, in your uh, like desktop while you're actively using it I can do that you know because um, since this script is not loaded into memory uh, I can just edit any update script and change you know whatever I want if I want to add more text if I want to add another um, icon or whatnot I just update the script and then uh, immediately uh, it'll it'll start uh, the next run that it calls itself it will update using uh, the new updated script because the the script that's loaded into memory is just the script that calls the other scripts the actual updating scripts so I found that that was one advantage too um, that I, I'm not sure if I if I had planned that I can't remember but it worked out that way so um, I also had uh, this one here uh, use which is for the CPU I think I had I was trying to update the CPU um, usage but something weird was happening and I can't really remember so I have to I have to see if I can fix this one because I really kind of want the CPU usage I want to set up the different cores and stuff so I have to work on this one but um, but that's pretty much it uh, I know my approach isn't probably the most um, traditional one and uh, it's most of my uh, uh, scripts here are written probably more from like an object oriented perspective but that's how I learned and I'm learning bash as I'm going now and I really do like it but um, I know that this approach is probably not the um, the traditional one I guess but it works for me and I really like how it sort of worked out for me because I can change everything I don't have to really uh, mess with patching DWM I kind of don't really like enjoy patching it I would much rather just do things like this you know um, edit files around DWM and you know piping things into the menu uh, or sort of editing uh, how dmenu works you know through through other external scripts rather than like patching it but patching works too you know there's no problem with patching but that's about all. I hope that you found this useful.